The psalmist assures us the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and full of compassion. We begin this second Sunday in Lent by employing God's loving forgiveness with hymn number 111, Attende Domine, number 111, verse two only. The main celebrant is Father Mauricio, assisted by Deacon Kevin. Please kneel. <clears throat> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. In response to the Lord's call to conversion, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask a blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us in worldly by your word, that with a spiritual sign made pure, we may <coughs> rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
the word of God strengthen you. May the word of God nourish you. May the word of God comfort you all your A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you, even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah but he did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my chosen son, listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good evening. Our readings from, for the time of Lent sometimes change depending on the catechumens or the candidates in the parishes. But that always starts during, after the third Sunday of Lent. The second Sunday of Lent always, in all the three cycles, has an account of the transfiguration of Christ. And in the Gospel, and the great promise to Abraham, and the first reading from the book of Genesis. So these are immensely important stories of our Christian tradition, and we need to give our attention to them with a bit of depth to understand who we are when we follow Jesus Christ. The book of Genesis is a foundational document for the Jewish people and for us who follow Christ. As we understand more this historical relationship of God with his people, the more we come to understand Jesus coming in the flesh to save us. The book of Genesis is all about the beginning of human beings, not in a scientific way, but in the way of faith. We who follow Jesus believe that God loves this world so much that he never abandoned us. Instead, God is always renewing his love for us and rescuing us from that which will destroy us. This time of Lent, my dear sisters and brothers, is a reminder for us of this truth. God wants us and he invites us to be reconciled to him. Our God reaches into time and history out of love, not with any intent to destroy us or to punish us. God chose a people to be his own, not because he rejects all other peoples, but because his people have a special role to play in bringing salvation to all other peoples. Abraham is among the first to hear this calling of the Lord. It is a call to follow the Lord even when it seems impossible. Abraham and then Sarah with him begin to follow this God. Right away there is the great promise. Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Oftentimes, my dear sisters and brothers, we are so afraid to listen to God's promises in our lives. We do not believe that God has the power to change and transform our lives. We get so happy in our songs of comfort that we don't want to live. And when it seems like God is inviting us to do something different, then we tremble and we are afraid to move. In the second reading from the letter to the Philippians, we have this great promise to us. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. The challenge is to believe and to have the faith that Abraham had in this God who loves us and seeks us out and gives us promises. It is not easy because it demands that we look beyond this life and it demands that we enter a relationship with the living God on his terms. And that is the real challenge for us. Sometimes we say that we believe in God. Sometimes we say that we want to follow him. But sometimes we also condition that relationship in our own terms. We play with God and we say, God, I will do this if you do that else for me. I will follow you but I want you to do this for my family. I will change, I will give up on this sin, but I need you to do this for me. And it's a relationship we need to be in the same terms that the one who is initiating that relationship is. The Gospel, for instance, Luke it gives us an account of the transfiguration. It was such a strange experience, even for those who were present, but Peter begins to talk about making tents. And the gospel tells us that Peter did not know what he was saying. It was clearly such a strong and unusual experience that other gospels even speak of Peter sort of being out of his mind. But the transfiguration account is given today 
because the great voice from heaven speaks out just as in the baptism of the Lord. This is my chosen son. Listen to him. We need to listen to God, my dear sisters and brothers. But how can we listen to God if most of us don't even read Holy Scripture? How can we listen to God if the only time that we have with God is when we come to church once a week, if so? How can we listen to God if our personal relationship with God is not motivated by all we do in our daily life? How can we listen to God if we are even afraid to ask him to speak to us? My sisters and brothers, we are heirs of the promise to Abraham, and we are witnesses to the accounts of the baptism and the transfiguration. God promises us that we also will be transformed, transfigured. Let us listen to him. What is that which God is asking of us during this Lent? Abraham and Sarah believed and were not afraid to follow, the, to follow God wherever he was leading them. Are we listening to God's voice in our lives? Do we believe in his promises? Are we willing to allow the Lord to change, transfigure our lives? This journey of Lent is just starting. Do not be afraid to leave that vice, that bad habit, that sin that is not allowing you to enter into that deep and personal relationship with Christ. Reflect, my dear sister and brother, on what is that that is holding you back? What is that sin that causes you to be afraid to listen to the voice of God? What is that bad habit that you keep struggling with, but you don't want to let it go because you are so attached to it? Today, God is speaking to you. Like Abraham and Sarah, he's promising you something that is greater, but you have to leave. Are you willing to leave your comfort zone? Are you willing to leave everything behind and go to a place that you don't see clearly, but that you believe that God is going to give you. Lent, my dear sisters and brothers, is a time for us to be free. What is that that is somehow holding us back? What is that that is not keep allowing us to be free? What is that that I know has to go, but I don't want to go, to let it go? Today, my dear sisters and brothers, let us ask the Lord to allow us to see his glory. The Lord who once transfigured at Mount Tabor is going to be revealed on this altar today. See his glory and ask him to let you be that man and that woman that he is calling you to be. Be courageous, be strong, and do not be afraid to listen to the voice of God that is telling you exactly what to do and how to do it. Do not be afraid and do it. Amen. Please stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
Mindful of the covenant our merciful Lord has made with us, we offer our needs to God. May all Christians follow St. Paul's example of faith by being true imitators of Jesus Christ. May more members of our parish and diocese answer God's call to ministry, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. May the elect and those preparing for the Easter sacraments know the support of their parish communities. May all of us be transformed through the practices of our faith, Lenten devotions, sacramental confession, and through the synod process, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. May those who risk their lives to bring peace to the world, missionaries and military personnel, first responders and caregivers be successful and supported. And for the success of the Bishop's annual appeal, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. May God answer the intentions in our parish prayer book. May the sick and dying, the unrepentant and sinful, the violent and unloving, the lost and frightened, be transformed and graced by our prayers, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. May all the dead who await the new heaven and new earth, Helen Malinowski and Reverend Manuel Lorente, and all who recently died, and Rose Seminara, be welcomed as citizens into heaven, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. Loving God, we place all things before you, confident that in your kindness and mercy, you will graciously hear and answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing number 815, Out of the Depths, number 815.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things that made them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make a holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took breath, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the breath, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passing of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth and Satan, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim and church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you had summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant a peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await a blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Are you staying? Is peccata mundi miserere nobis on you stay. Vital is peccata mundi miserere nobis on you stay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am no worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed. spread 
said, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you Sisters ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. <laughs> First of all, I apologize for shouting at you. I forgot to map our mic up earlier, which happens occasionally, I'm sure you've noticed. Please get a copy of the bulletin that contains the third of the five examines to help you prepare for confession. Sign up for Children's Good Friday Passion Play. Forms are available in the North Acts. 
Our military ministry is selling 50-50 raffle tickets in support of Operation Jersey Cares in the North Ends. Our Knights of Columbus hosts a simple soup supper on Friday at 6.30 p.m. in the Holy Family Room. Stations of the Cross on Friday at 7.30 p.m. will be led next week by the Women's Spirituality Group and Lazarus Ministry. Registration for next fall's RF is ongoing. Registration by April 18th for early discount. Forms available in the foyer of the parish hall, on our website, and on the religious formation office. Um, one other announcement I'd like to add, the diocese is going to start another uh, diaconate class. There are two information nights coming up, so if any of the any of you gentlemen are feeling the call, please see me after Mass. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always decide it and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy and peace. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing number 490, There's a Whiteness in God's Mercy. Number 490. Which is more than little. 